Josh Widdicombe. XFM. Vampire Weekend on XFM. It's Josh Widdicombe. Good morning. Vampire Weekend, a band that uh, my producer Neil uh, said are nice. It's that kind of uh, hot showbiz gossip <laughs> you tune in for every Saturday morning. How are you, Neil? Very well, thank you. Good, yeah. Well, any more uh, hot goss on a Vampire Weekend? Not a Vampire Weekend. Um, oh, oh. I'm trying to think who's been in XFM this week. Miles Kane. Miles Kane. He always smells lovely. He always smells lovely. Mm. How close do you get to him? I, oh, oh, I've got all like, access. Di- different smells, or has he got one consistent lovely smell? Just one consistent kind of really nice smell. Nice musk. Uh, <laughs> musk is one word. Well, that's right. That's nice. What, what did... I'm quite interested. So how long... You record these things with them. What, what do they drink? Do, are they rock and roll, or is it... Is it um, are you talking about mixtapes and stuff? Yeah. Um, they... Yeah, not, not albums. <laughs> <laughs> You're not taking time out from your busy album recording schedule to do my radio show. <laughs> they, they, it's just very much tea war, coffee. Mm. Yeah, nothing too rock and roll. Oh, that's right. It's these kind of things that people go, oh, why isn't Gordon Smart doing Saturdays as well? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we, we will not be having any more celebrity gossip because I think we've burnt ourselves out on that. Uh, we have various... Uh, we have all the usual features. We can say that now, can't we? We've been around long enough. And uh, we're also joined by um, Josh Riddicombe Show debutante Nish Kumar uh, from Eleven. And um, anything else? Trivial. Trivial. That's one of the usual features, mate. All right, OK. I'm, I'm, just, we, ex- I'm just excited because you're doing it this oh, week. Oh, I'm doing it this week. And I've done it, mate. I did mm. it in pret a uh, and um, had a, ordered a porridge, and how did it go? Well, we'll see later. I mean, it's been quite a low key start. Josh Widdicombe. Panic Station Muse. Uh, that was a lovely edit into the uh, the, the bed <laughs> that we have uh, for uh, of the music that we talk over now. It was just a, the, the trumpet that came in just perfectly. <laughs> was really overshadowed by their massive brass section. It made, it made us just seem quite facile and silly. Oh. Oh. Do we, can we start the bed again, just to get a real feel for how it starts? Oh, I love it. <laughs> 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 it's, Have you edited that, or is that how the song starts? That's how it starts. One more time. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant, isn't it? <laughs> I feel, I feel I feel genuinely happy now. It's you chose re- it. I know. I know I chose it. I'm <laughs> delighted. Delighted with myself. It's taken me three months to give myself a pat on the back for that. <laughs> <laughs> Great choice. Um, <laughs> what's it called? Um, Eastern Standard Time. Eastern Standard Time by who? I don't know. Oh, I'm sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> the names get changed. From, um, I'm not going to bore you. No. Oh, you're not going to bore me. No. Okay, no worries. Um, um, so there's two things I want to talk about this week. One is Eastern Standard Time. <laughs> It's a text in, uh, and it is, um, which time zone are you in? <laughs> we're not doing that. Although it would be good if we were trying to cre- create a full a full world of people in time zones, but that is for another week. Text in your time zone. <laughs> 83936 or tweet us at XFM. That's not what we're doing, but if you do it, I can't stop you. I can't stop you tweeting that in. Uh, the two things we do want to talk about. Uh, number one, uh, off the back of James Acaster's return last week when he revealed... Um, that at his school, you had to bring in your own towels. <laughs> um, I wanted to do something called, was it only at my primary school that we had to do this, or that this happened? Are we narrowing it to primary? Oh, no, but it will be better if it's primary. Okay. We, we will accept secondary if it's really good. But primary's always funnier. Sixth form? No, not sixth form. Okay. No, sixth form, you're basically an adult at sixth form. Um... So, uh, my primary school was a small... I, I grew up in Devon. Um, I don't know if you know this. Um, <laughs> I, I went to a very... I genuinely went to a small village school. Do you know how many people I had in my year? Uh, I'm going to say, kind of, 100? Four. <laughs> <laughs> Four wow. people in my year. Yeah, it was a tiny school, so we didn't get our own school dinners made, right? Mm-hmm. Like, you did, we didn't have the facilities, which was what we called a kitchen, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so, what we'd have to do is... Um, when we were answering the register, you had to say packed or dinners, depending on whether you had packed lunch or school dinners. <laughs> and then one of the children would have to phone through to the nearby school. This feels like I'm, I mean, this feels like I'm making it up. That's what we're looking for. They'd have to phone through to the nearby school and go, we'll have school dinners, please. And then they'd be delivered. <laughs> Genuinely. That is amazing. Yeah. I feel like I grew up on Terrence, Um But um, that, that's the, uh, the small island from Castaway, the, uh, <laughs> the kind of uh, proto-big brother from... Uh, from the, the turn of the century. It wasn't mm-hmm. a great show. 
Um, but anyway, hey, we got Bill uh, Ben Fogel. We out got of Ben it. Fogel. Out. Anything, anything that launches the career of Ben Fogel is all right with me, eh? That, that's <laughs> number one in the rules of life. Um, but um, so any, any kind of quirks that you thought might only happen to you at school. The other one I had was, but I, this turns out that everyone did it because I tweeted it this week. Was uh, we spent a lot of time growing cress. Did you do that at school? Yeah, we did. It turns out in, a, on, on a potato or in a t- pair of tights. In, in an something. egg, maybe. Not, yeah. not, not, not a pair of tights, you weirdos. No, you do it in a pair of tights. Did you? you put the potato in a pair of tights or something and then, yeah. Oh, that's growing a potato. That's <laughs> what you've done there. Uh, the other thing we're looking for, because um, we've got uh, Nish Kumar coming in, who uh, is currently James Acaster's landlord. So we just thought, I mean, this is an Acaster special, these two. Uh, we thought we'd go with um, just the most minor. Uh, Worst housemates you've ever had. Worst housemates you've ever had. Open brackets. Minor reasons. Close brackets. Josh Widdicombe. Uh, XFM. He accused me of saying this every week, but I'm going to say it again. As always, at this time, news hound Joe Lysett. Good morning, Joe. Buenos dias, Josh. Buenos dias, listeners. Oh, do I... Do I uh, do Spanish. I, Spanish. <laughs> I, 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 yes. I, where are you? I'm in uh, Tenerife, Josh. Oh. Woohoo! What are you doing there? Living the dream. I'm just on a little holiday. Just what? chilling out, getting tanned. Well, I've oh. actually burnt, actually. Who are, you, who are you on holiday with? I'm with my friend Ed. He's a theatre director, so we're doing lots of theatre chat. Oh, but that's really setting Tenerife alight, isn't Absolute it, Absolute lads, we are. Absolute lads. What do you get up to we last night? We hit the club. We hit the club. We went, there's one there's one club it's a one club what's it called For it, it's called papagayo which we realize is popper gay basically um <laughs> uh which was a which was a worry it's a very fun <laughs> club it was um it was full of uh daddy gays no it wasn't it was just a nice fun yeah club <laughs> so we're well, all, I'm glad we just a had time. our buffet breakfast they love a buffet breakfast don't they in Tenerife? they do it's local culture I don't know. Yeah. Um, I don't know if they do that I had themselves. A, I had a chicken sausage. I had a chicken sausage. It's completely different over here. Oh, what a life you lead. You're such a globetrotter. Oh, uh, Joe, we, this morning, before we start, we were t- we've were we been uh, soliciting for texts about uh, the things that only happened at your primary school, and Timothy Swan has tweeted us, I was oh, at the same word. school as Newshound at Joe Lysett. Oh my Weirdness word. included a pathological obsession with not wearing coats. Was that you or the school? Oh. Do you I know Timothy? Uh, Swan? Oh yeah, that might. Have... Yes, I remember Timothy Swan. Hi, Timothy Swan. Um, I, I I remember vaguely that they had some rule about that. Maybe yeah, there were some odd rules about like what what clothing you could wear at what time in the year as well. Well, they did, I mean Timothy Swan is certainly. Uh, I'm not saying you're accusing Timothy Swan of lying, but you're certainly not. Um, okaying his story no i'm not um i can't i can't verify timothy swan's story at this I'm point so, oh i'm on God. holiday i've just had a chicken <laughs> sausage times <laughs> times are different for me okay joe so what is your news story this week <clears throat> oh my word it's a huge news story josh we've probably all heard about it uh it's a, an international news story as well there's um a place called zalapa which is the state uh, uh, state capital of veracruz and they're running mayoral elections on July the 7th. Well, what country is this? One, one, of the, one of these many countries in, you visit when you globe in, Mex- in Mexico, mate. Mexico. That's where I'm going next. Mexico. Uh, I believe God, they have the turkey the sausages there. there. Uh, and um, uh, one of the mayoral candidates is a cat. <laughs> Lit- literally a cat. Right. How does that Boris. Work? You mean uh, a cat, a mean like a cat as in an actual cat, not just as a kind of a jazz musician from the... Uh... No, literally, I'm looking now at the picture to promote it, and it's just a picture of a cat called Morris. His slogan is... Morris isn't Zalapa. even a Mexican name! No, it's not. Um, Zalapa without rats, that's his, uh, his slogan. <laughs> um, is he going to win? Um, well, according to Facebook likes, he's second in the running at the minute. <laughs> So there's a good chance if we build up a campaign for him, he insists that although he's likely to cause a mess on a regular basis, he will at least cover it up and not leave it lying around for everyone else to. <laughs> so that's nice, isn't it? What? He he lists his weaknesses as quilts, sheets, pillows, couches, and clothing in general. 
<laughs> I think it's. I quite like the idea of a yeah, cat. Yeah, I'm all over. Do, do, do you know when the election? I like is? the idea of. I think we should be. I like the idea this. of greet. We should greet a mayor by stroking their head. I think that's a good <laughs> idea. Is he going to have to wear a massive kind of one of those chain necklaces? I don't. Uh, that's. Oh God, yeah, that could be. Maybe they'll do like a cat version for him. <laughs> It'll have a bell on it. Yeah. <laughs> And his name. Um, <laughs> so what's what's when's the election? Do we know? Yeah, it's on the July the seventh. So I, I think and we I, should follow this through to the uh, to the end. I think this should. Be I the... think so. Okay, so um, this week. Um, so w what's the Facebook page? I'm not on Facebook. Uh, I, don't I don't know. know I'm sure. Words. Just uh, just, just lot, search Morris, Morris Catmare. Cat okay, new, I what... think it would. I think it'd be easy to find when you just put in cat mayor. I don't think there's, <laughs> I don't think there's going to be lots of them, is there, Josh? You're not gonna, no, you're not going to get the mayor of the cats, um, which would be Morris, presumably. We're, what we're going to do then this week, Joe, we're going yeah. we're going to endeavour to get Morris to number one and improve oh, his campaign. Oh, yes! Let's that, use the XFM listeners to Let's get use Morris the XFM the listeners to do something genuinely meaningful and good for the world. <laughs> We, we can, we can do this, charity. guys. Let's not do that. Instead, let's try and get a cat. Popular. Yes, we cat. Yes, <laughs> we cat. <laughs> Thank you very much, Joe. Uh, next week, you will bring us an update on that story? Uh, of course, of course. Thank you very much. Cheers. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Josh Whittacombe. XFM. And it is XFM on a Saturday morning with Josh Whittacombe. And I'm joined, not just by producer Neil. Morning. But by Nish Kumar. Good morning. Good morning. Um, comedian? Yeah, in the looser sense of the word. Sage? Sage. <laughs> Prophet. <laughs> um, what, how, would, how would people know you? Dave's One Night Stand? Uh, probably Radio 4. Radio I got some 4? stuff on Radio 4 and I, you know, dulcet stunk it up around the country. Kumar. Yeah, the dulcet tones. And on the BBC did, Red Button, which I believe oh, was watched by button. upwards of tens of people. <laughs> Absolutely. Do you think that broke three figures? I think it would have broken double figures with the amount of times my mother watched it. <laughs> what did you do on it? Stand up. Yeah, stand up. Oh, there, what did you do on Radio Four? Stand up. The same thing. So they take. It's the first time that people have got pure Kuma. Yeah, this is the first time people have got unfettered <laughs> access to my Unfractist brain. Unfractist Kuma. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Uh, we're talking about two things this morning. Yeah. Uh, one uh, is um, it's primary school. Oh no, no, it's not primary school now. Why do I keep saying it's primary school? I don't know. Because it's primary schools are funnier. Yeah. Um. I mean, that's, that's that, just an that's first rule of comedy. Yeah, we yeah. all know that. Yeah, yeah. You learned that when you went to Radio 4. Yeah, of course, people are... Everything is funnier if everyone has to wear shorts. <laughs> that's mandatory. <laughs> Primary school and professional football are the yeah. two funniest things in the that's world. That's why netball isn't funny. Yeah, net, netball, <laughs> cricket, not funny no, at all. not funny. Put them in shorts, I say. <laughs> but a lot of people got in trouble for that kind of... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that kind of broadcasting. <laughs> In a different decade. Um, it's we a different were, era back then. Different the era 90s. back then. It was a different era back then. It was a very short-led era. Um, for things you did at primary school that only your primary school did, did you have any of these? Yeah, I'm I'm slightly upset. Do you remember the film The Mask with Jim Carrey, yeah, that yeah. curates egg of 90 cinema? Yeah. There's a point in that movie where he gives his car in at a mechanics and it's not ready the next day, so they give him something that they call the loner, which is like a really old battered car yeah. that he has to drive around and it embarrasses him in front of Cameron Diaz to hilarious consequences. We had that. <laughs> How, where was this story going? We had the loner but for swimming trunks. <laughs> if you forgot oh. your swimming trunks there was a loner pair oh, and they no. also doubled as rugby shorts again oh, as loners. That's, that is grim. Absolutely I tell you what, horrendous. We've got text on a similar thing. I can't, I can't find it. Where is it? Here we go. Um... This is unbelievable. Morning, Josh. Um, love, I think all, all texts and tweets should start like that. <laughs> what about me? Everyone's forgotten about yeah. Kumar. <laughs> Morning, Josh and Kumar. <laughs> uh, I went to a little village primary school, uh, which we had a pond in the grounds. Every so often, someone fell in and had to spend the rest of the day in a random assortment of lost property clothing. <laughs> My friend fell in and couldn't find any dry pants in the lost property box, <laughs> so I had to wear an upside-down vest as underpants for the rest of the day. <laughs> From Andy. I mean, that is worse than the loner. <laughs> that sounds like a prank played by the Bullingdon Club. Is it going to turn out that that was David Cameron? <laughs> I, I presume that we had trousers over the top. Why even bother with the vest? Just don't wear pants. But also, the problem is, if you've put trousers over the top, why then go, you'll never guess what I'm wearing as pants? <laughs> <laughs> why then... Inform yeah. people. Nor to the wise, I'm wearing a vest <laughs> under it. Just putting your hand up in the middle of maths going, FYI, <laughs> I am wearing a vest. 
Um, now, um, more of those, please. Not very, not, not not so blue though. <laughs> it's all got a bit. It's all got a bit grim. Um, That's what happens when you drop coma. Josh Widdicombe. XFM. The other subject, apart from uh, school, uh, we were talking about was uh, your worst flatmate. Yeah. Minor reasons. Um, right. Have you had any uh, bad experiences? Well, I've had. I mean, my concern with this is this is the sort of subject where I start to think. Am I, Am I everyone's bad, bad flatmate? <laughs> I really feel like I'm someone's nightmare story. You know, what, I what, sing what you you incessantly. Sing? What do you I sing? refer to the bathroom as Dumpton Abbey. Like, oh, I am not... <laughs> I, I don't why think do you, I'm why, a good flatmate. What do you sing? I don't know. It's like my brain's constantly leaking whatever music it is that's going. You know, oh, I just wake yeah, up in no, the morning. No one likes a singer. S- singing, I want to know what love is. Brackets, I want you to show me. <laughs> <laughs> no Close one brackets. wants to be woken up to that. Close brackets. Sorry, I can't believe do you I sing left like that. I want to know what love is. Open brackets. <laughs> I want you to show me. Close brackets. <laughs> It's very important. I think you... all songs with brackets in should. You should have, have to sing the brackets. brackets. And but I often leave parentheses open, and it causes all sorts of grammatical. Uh, can we, can we name other songs that would um? I would do anything for that. I would open do brackets. For love. Open brackets. But I won't do that. I, <laughs> that was brackets. the original version. Meatloaf Road. I'd do anything for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, it was considered derogatory to the woman who he'd referred to as that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was from the album Bat Out of Basildon. <laughs> um. One of the things, uh, one of the tweets we've got um, that I was just reaching for, hence the sound that it sounded like I was leaving. <laughs> like I thought, well, power of Basil, and that's the end of the show, I'll leave on that. Um, it's from uh, Gemma Somerset. Good name. Very good name. Yeah. Um, I, <laughs> I had a, uh, my microphone's slightly moving, Neil's just moved my microphone near it. It's not going to help, I'm just going to... I mean, if I was one of those rock and roll DJs, I'd uh, I'd, I'd sack you for that. <laughs> <laughs> Chris Evans, nineteen ninety eight. That would have been the end of you. <laughs> I'm worried that you're going to start employing Neil to come and do that at your stand up gigs, <laughs> just, just move to slightly it. move the microphone. <laughs> See, you've got so showbiz, Josh. You've changed so much. <laughs> Can't move my microphone, mate. <laughs> Gemma Somerset, I had a housemate that consistently left dead scorpions in our kitchen after cooking his herbal back remedy to oh. bathe in. I mean, Sorry, to bathe in. So my main issue is herbal herbal remedy. <laughs> that's not herbal. That's that's you know insectal. I don't know. What <laughs> Everything about that is disgusting. Exactly. It's Gem- one of those things where you think, well, it can't get worse than the scorpions. But yeah. Race to bathe in scorpions. Oh. Does she live with a supervillain? <laughs> <laughs> what? I, 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 no, not anymore. He's right. left. Okay. Either that or is is you know. His herbal back remedy. What was wrong, wrong with his, with his back? back? Go to a chiropractor. Come on, man. My back's not got enough poison in it. <laughs> <laughs> Josh Whittaker. Yes. Black and white town doves on XFM, and my microphone is slightly too low, so I'm now adopting <laughs> kind of bent knees position. <laughs> Still joined by Nish Kumar, how are you? Yeah, very well. I how like do it. I look? It looks like you're humbled by your radio <laughs> audience, slightly <laughs> bowing to them. As always, mate. As, as always, always, yeah. Uh, at this point, we do uh, a, a feature. I'm now crossing my legs to get a kind of lowness to my, <laughs> my stance. Just move it. There it goes. <laughs> <laughs> it's that, my favourite sound effect. Listeners, that was magic, what, what I just saw in front of me. <laughs> For listeners, I didn't actually move it. We've got that sound effect. We, we occasionally just play a game where we pretend I need to use the microphone. <laughs> um, this is a point at which uh, the, the feature named by Neil. Would you like to uh, introduce the feature, Neil? It's in pursuit of the trivial. And uh, what happens in this feature? You're upset that I don't know slash care about music trivia. Unbelievable. Mm-hmm. So you set me a different piece each week that I have to slip into um, conversation. And uh, and why have I uh, why have I said that you should uh, explain it this week? Because last week I, I thought I turned the table slightly and I set you the trivia to re- you realise it's not as easy as you think it, it is. isn't. It <laughs> isn't. It's actually a genuinely harrowing experience. Um, <laughs> so this week you sent me the trivia um, that Gomez. It was a bit of trivia about Gomez. Yeah. So because I, I'll set you trivia about the Beatles, which is quite easy to get into conversation. <laughs> I've got to kind of turn the conversation around to Gomez. <laughs> well, it was just without song. a conversation about the Adams family. It's quite <laughs> difficult. <laughs> Uh, their their song uh, "Whipping Piccadilly" was about Manchester Piccadilly Station, and they saw uh, when they went to see Beck, and the guy in the suit of the song for that video was meant to represent Beck, which is easy. Oh. All right, slip yeah. that in. Slip that. I mean, sure. I've got, I think you have to be in conversation with Gomez <laughs> to actually bring anything up about Gomez. If you ha- happen to run into John Gomez, <laughs> the lead singer of Gomez. 
you really, uh, that's the only You've time been, that sort of stuff. Although, around, sadly, it? he'll know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, so we see how I did? Should I, should I set the scene? Go on, then. I was buying uh, porridge in Pret-a-Manger. <laughs> oh, God. That's... And I was standing at the right height. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. Take-out, please. Take-out. Take-out, yeah. 324. Got a lot of time to go, most of you are always dressed up there. Right there. Cheers, oh, thank you. Yeah. Whipping Piccadilly, I think it's called. Can you do a Uh, yeah, please. <laughs> Cheers. Yeah. Wait. No. Oh, yes. No, no. <laughs> that bit at the end is me uh, panicking and refusing the receipt, then saying I'll have a receipt, then refusing it again, then taking a receipt anyway because <laughs> I was in panic <laughs> that I just dropped some Gomez trivia that hadn't been taken on board. I don't know why more novels don't begin with the line, I was just buying porridge in press. <laughs> <laughs> well, how do you think I did? I'm... <sighs> so you know, I thought I was quite slick the way I just said I feel like the guy in that video by Gomez. <laughs> I'm not, I don't have a problem with your delivery. Point. I don't have a problem with your delivery, but we uh, we know how you are a stickler for the fact that you need to be able to hear the trivia in the first place. Oh. <laughs> so Did I, you hear it? Yeah, I could. I thought I have a problem with this delivery because it's obvious. I thought you raised the volume of your voice when you started the fact as though you were suddenly desperate to make sure that that bit got recorded. I just imagined the person serving you the porridge thought, why did he suddenly get louder <laughs> when he started talking about... He's got some kind of Gomez shouting syndrome. Gomez Tourette's we've all <laughs> I mean Nish has put a good defence up for you but yeah. no it's not no, working for me oh that's disappointing that's sorry Josh disappointing. I now know what rejection feels like <laughs> at last I will again adopt the uh, slightly <laughs> bowed stance um next week this one I've got for you uh, uh Neil yep John Lennon so you know giving you an easy target <laughs> Do, um, do, do, no, that was a man like that. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Give you an easy subject. Yeah. Yep. Uh, that's the one. Yeah, yeah, that's the one. That's the word I used the first time round. <laughs> Don't know what you heard. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Yes. Uh, when John Lennon wrote the song Jealous Guy, mm -hmm. uh, that was about when he made Yoko Ono write a list down of all the people she'd slept with. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Right. So, um, I don't know who was on that list. I'm not, I'm not going to bump into any of them, I imagine. No, so, I mean, they'd be the obvious ball <laughs> yeah, of Gomez. Unless, <laughs> people in Gomez are people who work in Pratt. <laughs> uh, so, good luck with that. Josh Widdicombe, XFM. Door Cinema Club on XFM. This is Josh Widdicombe, still joined by Nish Kumar, who created another sound by putting on his headphones. I'm a Terminator. You I'm an actual Terminator. Terminator. And so, um, what's... Um, what do, you, do we know why that's happening? It's feedback. I know it's feedback, but why only with Nish? Yeah. Well, no, because we have our headphones on when we put the microphones oh, right, live. Nish is, is, is playing by his own rules. I'm chilling out. I'm you just put your headphones on at the last minute, like when Paul Ince used to put his football shirt on as he came onto the pitch. <laughs> that's exactly what it is. Yeah. <laughs> I just touch the desk as I approach it, <laughs> just like uh, the cop sign at Anfield. <laughs> this is XFM. Um, <laughs> That's what this says on the sign. I wasn't just yeah. confirming. I was <laughs> <laughs> just going, if you think you're listening to Five Live, guys, this is XFM. This is I, what happens. It felt like people. you were reminding yourself there. <laughs> oh, this is XFM. <laughs> I'm Josh Widdicombe. <laughs> uh, we, we were talking about weird things you did at your primary school. Uh, presumably, you'd, like, sharpen your pencil as you were walking into the exams. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, I'd put my shorts on as I was coming into <laughs> class. <laughs> <laughs> you got expelled from a lot of schools, so what can I say? <laughs> Particularly he's had a vest and syllabus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Russell in Reading. Now, uh, we trailed the excitingness of this uh, opening line. This this just reads beautifully, this email. Uh, enjoy this, Nish. Um, at my primary school, we're allowed to play football in the playground at break, but with the following rules. Can you guess the rules, Nish? I'm, I can see the rules in front of me, but... Oh, you uh, shouldn't look at the... <laughs> I could, I was I was going to do them all and be like, wow, well, I'll I mean, go, I'll, what I'll a prescient what. mind I have that I was able to get all of them. What, rule one, Nish? Only six people were allowed to be in any game. Rule two? One of us had to be a referee and be fair. <laughs> <laughs> and rule three? 
The ball wasn't allowed to leave the ground. They said this was in case it hit a smaller child in the face, although now I suspect that the teachers just had a very forward-thinking football philosophy. <laughs> <laughs> that is the kind of thing we need to bring in, bro. <gasps> the teacher was playing tiki taka. <laughs> yeah. yeah, our PE teacher won Mr Guardiola. <laughs> I, I like other weird rules in our school, including banning top trumps for fear of paper cuts. <laughs> <laughs> it's just that we take rubbish from our packed lunch home so that our parents would believe we'd eaten it. <laughs> brackets, your favourite thing, because apparently lack of food in our lunchbox wasn't evidence enough. Close bracket is exclamation mark, Russell in Reading. That's one of my favourite pieces of punctuation, by the way. Close brackets and an exclamation mark. <laughs> just the just whole no of stuff. the parentheses is to be exclaimed. <laughs> That is a great piece of grammar. And uh, now, oh, I'm pleased with Russell and Redding. We should dissect it more, but yeah. to be honest with you, I think he speaks for himself. <laughs> I don't know. Do you think Pep Guardiola, as well as the football philosophy, also implemented the lunchbox and Pep Top Trump's rule when he was in charge of Barcelona? <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure that Lionel Messi has never seen a pack of playing cards. <laughs> He was, Guardiola was so worried about him cutting his little hands up <laughs> that he's, you know, banned all of that stuff from there. People are buying Munich. Arjen oh, Robben, Frank Ribery, put away your top trumps. Guardiola is coming. Yeah. Bastian Schweinsteiger, <laughs> get your top trumps away, mate. It's all over. The halcyon era of your punk is letting you play whatever you want, whenever you want it. We have end. got too far into football in this league. <laughs> Remind yourself, Nish, as I said before, this is XFM. Josh Widdicombe. Podcast yes. XFM. And we move... Seamlessly into the final hour. This is Josh Widdicom, joined by Nish Kumar. Hello. Still here. Still here. Still and rocking. of course, uh, as always, James Acaster. How are you? Very well. Very well. Good week. Uh, yeah, lovely week. Good. But uh, I mean, the highlight of our week so far, uh, before we move on to your week, James, is um, our favourite tweet so far today, yeah, uh, which was about Nish. What was what was the tweet? Uh, Lewis Weatherly's tweeted in uh, responding to the picture that Josh posted to me on Twitter in the studio saying, remember when we saw this guy for free at the Fringe? <sighs> and look at him now. <laughs> look at him now. He's got headphones on. Wearing headphones like a real boy. <laughs> I've really grown. I've, I've really, really grown, grown as a human and a man and, and as a uh, radio guest. This is the big time. And I'll be honest, it's <laughs> a bit of a disappointment. It's <laughs> not what I was expecting. You only do the Josh Riddickham radio show twice. Once on your way out, once on your way down. <laughs> um, James. Yep. You're on it for about the tenth time. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. How's your week been? Lovely, thank you. Yeah, very yeah? good. What um, have you been up to? Well, a number of it. I already texted you midweek. The uh, actually, I didn't even text. I, I texted you and then I rang you up about it. About my yeah. highlight of the week was so yeah. I, I met someone who had eight sugars in their tea. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't believe it. That's not. I mean, that's not a thing. How did you? Were you making your tea in the morning? Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh my. I wish, mate. <laughs> Uh, 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 Think I need some more glucose in my blood? <laughs> I, uh, I was not, Josh. <laughs> oh, no one needed that mental image on Saturday. Yeah, took a few jelly babies in there as well, and a, a dib-dab. Uh, <laughs> That's not a euphemism, is it? <laughs> no, well, you know. We, we've, all, we've all had a dib-dab in the morning. Um, uh, uh, is that what yeah. 50 Cent's candy shop song was about? Yeah, uh, uh, hence the line, dib-dab in the morning, uh, but baby starts a yawning. Uh, I don't even know what we're talking about anymore. I don't know anymore. Eight sugars in the tea. <laughs> so, you, how, did, how did this happen? Just, uh, um, had, had, a, had a meeting, and, uh, she, she ordered a tea, and, uh, the person said, who, uh, had made her tea before, said, still eight, still eight sugars? And I thought, <laughs> I thought, that's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, a really funny guy. little jokey, uh, and I laughed, and she went, yes, please, really serious. And she, <laughs> and she, she looked at me and went, everyone always judges me about, you know, you're never one judging me about eight sugars, aren't you? I was like, what are you having eight sugars for? And she was like, well, I like hot chocolate and milkshake, and you know, can't get them here, so I have to have eight sugars in my tea. I she spoke to my friend later, but I basically told everyone about it. Yeah, of course. I couldn't stop talking about it. <laughs> and, uh, and my, my friend said there's no way. And I had off. <laughs> <laughs> but my friends were like, there's no way that, that they would dissolve. I've got a friend who did a, you know, a yeah. science course in, in university. <laughs> and uh, he said it couldn't dissolve in the tea. There's no way there's like No, sugars. but she, she, what she'd do, she'd enjoy her tea with su six sugars and then have two spoonfuls of sugar left over from the bottom of, to just, yeah, as a chaser. <laughs> like a Jaeger bomb. Yeah. <laughs> You're well, basically drinking a cake at that point. <laughs> uh, yeah. Once you've gone beyond four sugars, it's... Yeah. I think once you've, once you've hit two sugars, then you're morally corrupt. <laughs> Mind you, I used to, 
when I was in school, I used to get home from school and there was a half hour window before my parents got home and I would have a, a hot chocolate with four sugars in it. Oh my oh word. I used to do that. Until Apparently your mum is listening with her head in her hands. <laughs> oh, going, I, no wonder he hasn't grown to a proper size. I'd, I'd have to pop a shotgun in it because like, yeah, they would be back to it. <laughs> they'd come back and be wired. In my mouth. <laughs> and they'd go, we're, out of this. we're very low on sugar and options. What's going on? Oh, that's the options for chocolate, not just, um, <laughs> <laughs> not just what to do with this boy anymore. Um, <laughs> We will be asking you, James, not just about sugar, about the topics uh, of the day. Mm. Uh, but first, you know, this is a this is someone who. Well, I don't, I don't know. How, let's speculate before Nirvana how many sugars we think Kurt Cobain had in his tea. <laughs> Twelve. Uh, Twelve. Many. Yeah. Two. Two. Uh, well, I was going to say too much. Too many. Too many sugars. Yeah, he did have an addictive personality. Josh Widdicombe. Um, we are still here on Josh Riddicom, XFM on a Saturday morning, joined by comedian Nish Kumar. Hello. And comedian James A. Caster. Thank you for that. Oh, that was quite tense for a second there when you introduced Nish as a comedian. I thought, <laughs> oh dear, am I going to get the same treatment? <laughs> I was hoping for air quotes, but then that is dreadful <laughs> radio. And uh, producer Neil Fern. Hi. Hello, there we go. Just keep, to keep you in the loop. <laughs> um, James, we were talking this morning hmm. um, about weird things that happened at your school. Obviously, you you started this topic, so we can't we can't now come Got to the you. ball rolling. Yeah, um, but you we've had quite a lot of tweets. What's your, have you you've looked? What's your favourite? I, I mean, yeah, I'm, I think they're all really good. Uh, this is my favourite one. Is um, I, I'm going to say Sam. this out. I think it might be one of the best topics we've ever done. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I think it's good. It's tweets. been a lot of a, a lot of weird school experiences. <laughs> uh, Sam in Welling uh, says. What's my primary school? And I'll, I'll tell you what, Sam, before I read this, the answer is yes to this question. <laughs> <laughs> What's my primary school? The only one with a ventriloquist head teacher. <laughs> she a demon headmaster. <laughs> yeah. Also, uh, th th this next sentence, Sam's, uh, Sam's use of... Uh, <laughs> this is an excellent choice of words here. She regularly whipped out Barney, the pink dog. <laughs> brilliant. Wh whipped out dog Barney, the pink dog in assembly, who taught us morals and sang songs to us. That's amazing. <laughs> I love how she's just gone, I can't I get across morals <laughs> for the kids. I think I better whip out Barney, the pink dog. I what they're going to respect as a pink dog. <laughs> Barney? Isn't Barney... Barney's a dinosaur, purple yeah, Barney's dinosaur. Barney's a purple dinosaur. I was going to say, there's there's no trademark issues there. Well, yeah, but clearly that teacher was like, what, we're going to name a pink dog, and then saw there's a purple dinosaur called Barney. We had a, we had a vicar that used to, um, he wasn't a, um, a ventriloquist, but he did... Um, <laughs> thank God. Yeah, quite literally, thank <laughs> God. <laughs> um... Did you say he was? He was in many ways. God was his ventriloquist. <laughs> he, he, he was. He was God's dummy. Yeah. He's, God made him talk, and God kept whipping him out just to <laughs> teach morals, teach morals, Actually, and sing songs to people. I don't think he did because, from what I've heard, um, there's recently been a bit of a scandal. But I'm not going to go into oh, that. Oh, good anyway, lord! Anyway, I was your vicar. Uh, yeah, without my vicar, but he. Um, <laughs> well, he wasn't my vicar. Um, but uh, I'm not going to go into this now. I can't for, for, for legal. Don't. Fits, don't. Yeah. Here's a line, let's go. Okay, I can't tell you this anecdote, by the way, because of fear of revealing who he was, but he did have a puppet. <laughs> he did have a puppet. Yeah. Stop. Oh, God. <laughs> Please tell me that wasn't a euphemism. Stop! No, oh, oh. Okay, well, do you want to read out one more, James? Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, here, here's one. Um, it says, the vicar at my... This is from Josh Whittaker. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I think at this point in the show, we all need somebody to whip out a pink dog and sing us songs and teach us morals. morals. Yeah. yeah. Because we've all misbehaved. This next tweet is a uh, is a uh, says a uh, I, I used to get whipped out in assemblies to sing songs and teach kids morals. <laughs> Those days are over. I'm very bitter now. From Barney from Wellin. <laughs> Barney from a squat in Wellin. Yeah, I'm like, currently dr drinking on my own in a caravan. <laughs> yeah. Did Barney leave Wellin? Like Barney yeah. in Letchworth now. He's relocated. <laughs> yeah, he had to get out of Wellin. Yeah. Too many dark memories. <laughs> I'll uh, keep them coming in. Uh, Barney, if you are, if you are out there, get in touch. Josh Widdicombe. Podcast. XFM. James's Classic Scrapes every week. Um, if you don't know by now, in, in probably, uh, probably the best bit, James, uh, would you agree? <laughs> well, no. <laughs> I, I, I don't want to, I don't want to hype it wasn't up my, It wasn't my point either. It was, uh, it was Neil's point, so, um, <laughs> sorry. It's my favourite bit, Josh. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> it's, it's, uh, you know. I'm, I'm normally in bed for the rest of the show. <laughs> <laughs> you <Okay>. cad. <laughs> <laughs> but in the middle hour, you're trying to source eight sugars, and then yeah. you get here. <laughs> so what's your, uh, what's your scrape this week? Um, I thought, because we talked about uh, school, um, I talked about when I, I tried to revisit my uh, 
my old school. Try to go back to it. But basically, um, I used to be able to walk, cut through... Why did you try to go back to your old school? Well, basically, right, there, there's a route from my house, my friend Jake's house. This right. is all very suspicious. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the quickest route to Jake's house from my parents' house is through the school. So when I was, right, when right, I was right. a kid... Through the classrooms? No, no, through the, <laughs> the playground. Down corridor. <laughs> <laughs> through the playground, thank you very much. Right, did do some hopscotch on the way. Sure. Right. <laughs> Primary or secondary? Uh, secondary school. Did, did you really have hopscotch at secondary <laughs> school? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, James did. Yeah. <laughs> I just did, yeah, me playing hopscotch on my own <laughs> in the corner. Anyway, that was... Uh, in, in my school days, I'd always cut through the school, it was fine. And then about seven years after I'd left school, I was visiting okay. my parents, I was on my way to my friend Jake's house, and I thought... I could cut through the school again, and I could visit my old teachers on the way. I could be like, <laughs> <laughs> "How's well, it going?" Well, I'm teaching. Can I, <laughs> well, no, is oh, it, I don't remember me. <laughs> yeah, well, I thought, you know, some of them won't be working. Some of them will, will be in the staff room on their like, you know, hour off. Whatever. How's it going? Good to see you, Mr. Mason. Still rocking the gym. <laughs> I, I used to like that. So, God, it's a wonder they weren't more pleased to see you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So I thought, yeah. I, I thought, now the thing is, in the seven years I'd left school, um, a few things had changed. Uh, what, <laughs> one, <laughs> the ex pupils weren't allowed to walk. <laughs> what the head into the stuff. Well, that was basically the main thing. Well, what, what, one of the main things was like, you know, when I was in school, um, security wasn't as tight for one. <laughs> Because it was like, <laughs> I, was, I was, you know, <laughs> I don't want to sound, don't, don't, don't want to sound like all, against the back of your head. Just all sorts of strangers coming in, playing hopscotch, <laughs> high-fiving Mr. Mason for rocking the gym. <laughs> I don't want to sound like an old man here, but back in my day. <laughs> <laughs> strangers were allowed to walk through the school. Well, it's paranoid. But anyway. I know there's really high fences all the way around the school. And also... Oh God, your school's like Glastonbury. <laughs> You have to have your photo on the ticket. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, also, another thing that had changed was their, was their, what time they had their lunch. <laughs> <laughs> now, I... It's nothing sacred. Yeah, yeah. So, I, 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 I walked in there at uh, half one, which is <laughs> normally half an hour after lunch is finished. Right. Turns out that uh, is when their lunch starts. So, I was... Oh, that's crazy I, business. I, 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 I'd, I'd, they must have been starving. I'd yeah. taken a few steps into the school and then heard the lunch bell. <laughs> And then, that wasn't the lunch bell, mate. That was the under <laughs> alarm. Hey, Cass is back. <laughs> Mason, take out. him out. You're, 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 you're the only one he trusts. <laughs> so, I love this image that you have in your head, that you walk back into school, the conquering hero. Come yeah. on. Everyone just going, oh, hey, Cass is back. I thought they were going to be really happy to see me. <laughs> but, like, it just, obviously the playground just flooded with kids. I've never met before. It's <laughs> <laughs> like hard day's night. They're more pleased than I thought. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, spare the fan <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, playground flooded with kids, and then like immediately a dinner lady who I also who was also not there when I was there, like, so a new member of staff walked up to me and she went hello. I said like, uh, hi. She went, um, what, what are you, were you doing? wearing? Oh, yeah. dress. What was I wearing? <laughs> I had my normal clothes. You were like, like I was like, in my school uniform for old times' sake. <laughs> it turned up like, come on, still fits. <laughs> <laughs> Not too late to get in on that RE class, right? I'm sorry, I didn't pay attention back in the day, but I'm ready to learn about Islam now. <laughs> like, I, it was, well, I turned up just normal and uh, <laughs> ready to learn about normal Islam. James. No, it was, it was uh, but uh, the dinner lady came up to me. She, she said, uh, "Can I help you?" I said, "Oh yeah, I." Uh, I, I'm just cutting through, actually. <laughs> and she, was, and she was like, I, I beg your pardon. I was like, I'm just cutting through in my friend Jake's house. Um, but, uh, I, I, she said, she said well, this, is, this is a school. I was like, yeah, but, I said, oh, but I, I used to go here. I used to, I, I used to go to this school. You know, Not I, as I, a pupil. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, I'm an like, I'm like student. And, like, yeah. you know, and she was like, right, well, look, if you're going to be on school premises, you've got to sign in. <laughs> so I said, oh, all right. So I'll, 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 cool, I'll, no I'll, I'll, I'll sign in on my way through. So one I, I went reason to a, for visit, cutting through. <laughs> <laughs> well, this was the thing. I went to reception. The reception said, hello. I was like, hello, I'd just like to sign in, please. <laughs> and she was like, great. Uh, which meant, by the way, I did realise it meant that uh, I was going to have to instantly sign out again. <laughs> <laughs> that was, all I was doing is going straight through. <laughs> Um, she, but she said, right, why, yo, why are you visiting? I said, I'm, I'm just cutting through. She went, you're not allowed to cut through. <laughs> I was like, right. She was like, right, wait there. And she got the deputy head. Whoa! Now, 
Deputy Head Turns Out to be the third member of Star. Detention. Huh? Yeah, I thought, well, I, I was surprised that I've been back five seconds and I'm already in trouble <laughs> with, with, with the debt. And he comes down, <laughs> and he's another member of staff I've never met before. It's like the whole staff has shifted <laughs> since, since I left. Are you sure it was the same school? Yeah. <laughs> well, it was the same one, mate. It still had uh, my classic graffiti on the side, uh, Scrape Master. <laughs> uh, but uh, he he comes down, this big, really massive guy, he says, right, I understand you're cutting for our school music as a public footpath. <laughs> I said, well, I used to go to this school. <laughs> right, James Aker, I'm the one who got into all the scrapes, mate. Uh, 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 asking, asking the staff room. But uh, it, it, it was like, you can't... Now, the thing is, I was getting told off by him. It was very hard to get told off by him because it was on Mufti Day. But he was <laughs> he was dressed in Hawaiian shorts and shit. <laughs> right. and, and, uh, Thank God like, you hadn't turned up in your uniform. You're doing what needs <laughs> yeah. yeah, which is basically what I used to do in school, actually. But um, I was... So I was, was like, was trying to... What was he wearing, Hawaiian shorts? Or? A long, like, three-quarter length Hawaiian shorts and a shirt, but, like, a, quite a jazzy shirt yeah. with a really big collar. <laughs> uh, so I was there trying to get told off by him, but I was like, I can't do this, I can't take it. And I was like, look, it's okay, I used to go to the school, like, I'm James A. Caster. Like, just ask around the staff room. And to, and it, and it's, he wasn't having any of it. He went, you're, you're going to have to leave. Now, the thing is, is that... So, so he, went, he went, you've got to go back out the way you came. Like, which is thought. counterproductive to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And also, the reception's in the middle of the school, so I thought, it's just as far to walk. You should just said yeah. you come from going. the other direction. Yeah. Well, no, no, no cause he knew what way I'd come in from. Oh. So I was like, right, but I was like, okay, I will, thinking, you don't tell me what to do anymore. <laughs> Get me here, I don't do it. So I walked the other way, and then I got, I got to the exit, and it's a big iron gate across it. It was locked. I oh. realised I was now oh. trapped at the other end of the school. Oh. And I had to oh, get... Yeah. Had to get across again, and I've never been so scared. Like, I was just <laughs> running, I'm legging it through these kids, <laughs> uh, trying to get out. And eventually, I got out. Um, but like the scariest point, and uh, I don't know, this shouldn't be incriminating. At one point, I was running, and I saw a child. Uh, with his back to me, but urinating in, in, into a bush, and it terrified me. <laughs> so I was like, if anyone knows I was near that kid, I'm I'm going down forever. And now I'm probably, <laughs> probably saying this on radio means I'm in a lot of trouble. It's really weird. It's like a re creepy remake of the end of Don't Look Now. <laughs> just the horrible. Kid with his back it was, to you. <laughs> it was horrible. But you know, I've learnt my lesson. I haven't done it again since. Just so you know. I really that feel like good. that's a lesson you should have been able to guess. <laughs> I really feel like experience should not have taught you. I that. honestly you can't just cut through a skull. I honestly maintain that back then it wasn't as big a deal. <laughs> <laughs> when did you go to school? Like the nineteen fifties or something? <laughs> oh no, there, there was a motorway going through a school. <laughs> oh, oh, the teachers would be happy to see me. Well, when she said I'm getting the deputy head, I thought Mr. Barley, brilliant, and it wasn't. <laughs> Mr. Barley would have come down and went, A Caster, you absolute card. I can't believe you're still up to your old tricks, cutting through the school. Let's have a chat. How are you doing? Leave him, leave him alone, you stupid receptionist. He's a legend. Instead, it was a big guy in Hawaiian shorts. He wasn't happy at all. I mean, I think we can we can file that under classic scrapes. <laughs> uh, thank you very much, James. Um, um, uh, more, more from... I don't know when I don't know when this this well is going to run dry, but hopefully not for a few more weeks. Well, hopefully for my sake, one day. <laughs> Josh Widdicombe.